Since NASA awarded SpaceX a $2.9 billion contract to develop a lunar lander, there has been a controversy between them. Yes, you heard right. The disagreement involves the number of tanker launches needed for a Starship lunar lander mission. While the national agency would love the numbers between the mid-teens and the high-teens, SpaceX supposed that was redundant and wasteful. When the incident seemed to have reached its climax, both decided to keep silent to look for a common solution. Unfortunately, after a while, SpaceX finally broke that silence with its recent announcement. So exactly how many times will Starship tankers be launched? Are there any other solutions for Starship HLS besides an orbit refueling? Recently, the keyword Artemis is one of the hottest topics on social networks. On January 9, NASA suddenly announced a plan to shuffle Artemis 2 and Artemis 3 to one year later. Targeting September 2025 for Artemis 2 and September 2026 for Artemis 3 on the same side, at a media briefing about NASA's Artemis lunar exploration effort, Jessica Jensen, Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration at SpaceX, revealed the key pieces of information about the Artemis 3's plan, including the needed number of refueling launches for HLS lunar lander. The propellant transfer is a critical technology for the Virgin of Starship. SpaceX plans to create a propellant depot in low Earth orbit, filled by a series of Starship tanker launches that would then be used to fuel the lunar lander Starship for its trip to the moon. With this mission, both NASA and SpaceX have a fear called boiling off which will affect the refueling process for Artemis HLS missions. We know that the spacecraft's propellant like methane and oxygen need to be stored at extremely low temperatures to maintain their liquid state, which requires advanced insulation and cryogenic systems. However, when they are in orbit with spacecraft, these fuels can still boil off at 258 Fahrenheit and 423 Fahrenheit, or 161 Celsius and 253 Celsius. Respectively, this makes them difficult to store reliably. In Artemis 3, there will be a boiling off situation between tanker missions, and if there is more time between missions, the more serious the boiling off matter will be. As a result, to avoid loss in the propellant, more tankers are compulsory to make up the gap and ensure the depot is full when the HLS vehicle arrives for fueling. So how many tanker launches does it take to fill the propellant depot? According to Jessica Jensen, the number will roughly be 10-ish. As she uses uncertain words like roughly or 10-ish, it means that the data isn't the official result because it could be lower. Depending on how well the first fight discs go, or it could be a little bit higher. Of course, all of us hope that the number isn't in the high teens. As far as I know, the initial number given is 16, and of course, Elon Musk intensely protested the unreasonable numbers. 16 flights is extremely unlikely. Starship payload to orbit is 150 tons. So a maximum of 8 to fill 1,200 ton tanks of lunar Starship. Without flaps and heat shields, Starship is much lighter, lunar landing legs do not add much, which is one-sixth to gravity, it may only need to be half full, and that is an identifying example for four tanker flights. Not that enough, at an advisory committee meeting in November of last year, Lakeisha Hawkins assist Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Moon to Mars program, increase the number of tanker launches up to the high teens. It sounds too much. But NASA has its own argument. So much of this is just going to have to come from flight tests, they said. Probably the reason why you're hearing different numbers is because we have a lot of different modeling and analysis iterations that are going on. It can be said that the 10-ish number SpaceX released a few days ago is quite accurate because at least the company has collected more data for calculating by experiencing more tests. SpaceX's Vice President Jensen emphasized that for the key technologies that have not been demonstrated into orbit like in-space transfer for cryogenic propellants, the best way to understand them is through the iteration and ground and space tests. It explains why SpaceX aims to have multiple test flights this year to experience and later master this difficult technology. Discussing this issue, another opinion from the space community is that tin tankers are redundant. In fact, 
Five or six would be enough to fill the depot if launched in quick succession. It is feasible. For one, Elon Musk aims to relaunch the super heavy booster within an hour of landing. The tanker will need longer, but when it comes to returns, it always has the booster ready to be stacked. The problem is that more launch pads are needed, and we've seen SpaceX building a second launch tower by the end of 2025 when the company plans to land on the moon. At least, there must be three operational pads with such a number of pads. The decreased number of launches is off the table. How many tankers do you think will be needed in Artemis 3? I would love to see your comments in the comment section below. Next, before continuing, if you found this information useful, let's subscribe to the channel and enable the notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. If refueling in orbit is so complicated, the Starship HLS have few more solutions. There are two solutions to get the distant destinations in space. Build a really big rocket with a lot of stages or refuel at the halfway point. The Saturn V took the first approach. It was almost as big as Starship and he used three separate stages during launch to get 16.5 tons to the moon. When you've got a big rocket, you've got to lift a lot of mass, which takes a whole lot of fuel and engines. They call this the tyranny of the rocket equation. The equation is named after the Russian scientist Konstantin Tsiolkovsky, who independently derived it and published it in his 1903 work. In order to understand the principle of rocket propulsion, Konstantin Tsiolkovsky proposed the famous experiment of the boat. A person is on a boat away from the shore without oars. They want to reach this shore. They notice that the boat is loaded with a certain quantity of stones and have the idea of throwing, one by one as quickly as possible. These stones in the opposite direction to the bank. Effectively, the quantity of movement of the stones thrown in one direction corresponds to an equal quantity of movement for the boat in the other direction. As your rocket gets bigger, you get less payload ratio as you grow. So early, NASA solved this problem partially by throwing away a bunch of their rocket through staging. SpaceX is taking the other approach. They are only doing two stages. They're recovering their first stage and even the second stage for Starship's case. That gets them up to LEO with barely any fuel left. Getting to orbit with a full tank would require an extra stage and super heavy would have to be three to five times as big. It is a lot simpler to design the system to refuel the halfway point between the ground and the moon, Mars, wherever. It turns out that just getting to LEO is basically halfway to anywhere where it comes to the amount of fuel you need. That makes SpaceX refueling strategy a very good one-size-fits-all solution for all the space missions you could ever want. The Apollo missions didn't need to refuel. The lander's mass was around 16.5 tons, but the full-stack Saturn V is roughly the same size as the Starship rocket. Meanwhile, while refueling, SpaceX is getting maybe 150 tons of cargo, 85 tons of dry mass, and enough fuel to get home. Refueling is giving them about 100x more than Saturn V took to the moon. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications feature so you do not miss out on any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you in the next time.